Are we doing it? We're doing it? We got a timer? The time is up? Hey, 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 hey. Let me get rid of my stick. Woo! Woo! All right. Minnie, what's today? Friday. Man, happy Festool Friday, everybody. Welcome to Festool Live. It's 12 noon, and we are ready for you. What are we doing today, man? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We should have done the best of it because look outside, everybody. Hey, Chris, pan over. Look at how beautiful it is. Winter time has given up the ghost, baby. We're heading into spring, and we got spring fever. So I'm going to introduce the room really quick. Over here, we got Big D. Hey. And woo! The man, the myth, the Monday legend. Over here on the camera, we got Chris Seibert. We call him... Chris Seibert. Chris Seibert. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the unit. Over here, we have Min Min. She's working the whiteboard. That's actually Minnie Gleb. Online, we have Brent Shively. He's working the uh, online chat today. <clears throat> Don't forget to hit your notification bell on YouTube. You like that, huh, Big D? I remember this time. I love it. Okay. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe, please. Yes. Also on IG, Instagram, FB, Facebook. And we thank you. How's that? Good? Did That's I nail good. it? Nailed Did I get it? it? Okay. So I better be getting good at this. This is episode number 45. And they said it never lasts. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Woo! Also, what else I got to say? Okay. I want to call this out. I want to call a couple of departments out. Um, it's our customer service. I call it our service after the purchase for you guys. Okay? We have an inside sales uh, team, customer service on the phone all the time. Okay? I want to take a sh give a big shout out to that department. Uh, they are an integral part of this company. Uh, we also have our repair department, and those are all my buddies down there. I love you guys. Thank you for all the work you do. You make us look good here in North America, and I truly believe that, and I think the world of you. Okay? So, I want to do a festival live with you guys soon. Okay. Ah, here we go. Now. Big D posted on the Festool USA Instagram account yesterday that this episode was going to be about the LR32. I was at home, and I said, we already did one on the LR32. Okay, it's episode what number? 13. 13, baby. And we already have 20,000 views on that. And I don't like to be repetitious. You may think I am, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. When we did that episode, everybody was emailing me, texting me, shouting out to me, hey, can you cover this next time? Can you cover this? So what I did is I always, we, we listen to you guys. I'm not going through the setup. Uh, you already know how to do the cup pins. You already know how to do the shelf pins. You know the basic setup of the line boring system from Festool. And I'm going to say it again. I think I said it in that first episode. It's my favorite accessory next to the parallel guides from Festool, okay? Because this is an incredible system. It's actually easy once you understand it, okay? And I'm going to cover some things today of the top questions that you have sent me so you can go, oh, that's what he was talking about. If I texted you on it, and sometimes I'm not the greatest in correspondence, um, to get my message across. And that's why I love this medium of YouTube, so we, I can really train you, because that's what my job is. I'm a Festool trainer. A lot of people here will tell you differently. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so as I go through this, I have done these over the years on different platforms. Okay, but the top, okay, so let's get started. The top question that I get all the time on the LR32 after, besides the basic setup, is <clears throat> I always try to show it when I'm doing an upper cabinet, which is usually 300 millimeters deep, 12, 14 inches, okay? And I cover certain things like, okay, from the front edge of a cabinet, it's 37 millimeter. From the back half of the cabinet or from the back, it's 37 millimeter. That's a standard 80 from the top. I cover that in the first one. But I get people scratching all the time. They go, well, what if I have a wider cabinet or if I have to do a center line for like a half shelf on a base cabinet? Or what if I'm doing a drawer box, okay? How do I calculate those, where that line goes, and how do I use the Festool system LR32 to do it? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm working on the cis wall. Follow me over here, Chris. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm working on the cis wall and I want to go over a couple things. Okay. Oh, let me get my paper. Okay. So I'm using the cis AZs. Okay. And in the schematic, it says the first hole from the front edge is 58 millimeter. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I can nail that with the LR32. Okay. Now, in between that first hole to the next hole, so your draw slides, look, I got a draw slide right here. Okay. See the holes? There's my first hole. Okay. That's what? 58 millimeters. Okay. So you, that lines up at the front edge when I put in the tray. And then the next one has to be exactly from here to here, 224 millimeters. Okay. Easy. That's why I love metric. So what I do is I measure from here to center to center, and I do the layout of the cabinet. Capiche? Okay. It's not 37 from the back. That's what I'm getting at. I made these cabinets 400 millimeters deep. And the reason I did that is, Chris, if you can span back up here, the schematic here says the, the, for the SysAZ it needs to be 380. I do them at 400 because I can put my nailer. See the nailer up there? That's roughly 18 to 20 millimeter. So my SysAZs will go and not bump in the very back. Good. Now, follow me over here. I'll bring the schematic over here, and I'll do a little bit of layout. Okay. I'm using the Festool side mount draw slides for the SysAZ. Okay. I want to cover this because these are undermounts right here uh, for like a base cabinet. These are from home. Okay. Remember I told you about 37 millimeter? And this is another question I get from folks. Okay. <clears throat> if we look, this is another typical side mount. Okay, this is something you get at a home center, right? Okay. All, oh my God, I would say the majority of all slides out there for drawer slides <clears throat> are based on the 32 millimeter increment. And I keep mentioning that number, 37 millimeters. That's how I build all my cabinets, except for the ones for the SysAZ. But if we look, here's the front of it. If I put that in the center, it's 37 millimeters, right? Duh, I can always use that first hole and then find where I want to place the rest of these holes. Okay? Now, these are my side mounts. Okay? Or, no, side mounts. I'm so sorry. Under mounts. But this is something that gets, that gets people confusing. This is the hole I'm going to use. Okay? If I line that exactly perfect, that's actually 35 millimeters. So my buddy called me up this summer, and he said, hey, that first or that hole that I need to line up with, I don't want, have one at 37. I go, look at your schematic. Okay? <clears throat> that 37 mil, or the schematic says, on the front edge of that drawer bank, you need a 2 millimeter reveal. So let me do some, a little bit of math. This is hard now. Hang on. I know it's Friday. Okay? Mini, what's 35 plus 2? Ding, 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 ding. So it's all built into your draw slides. The thing is, is like the other one, how do I determine this one? So, Chris, come in here so you can see this. I did my layout. This is for my SysAZ draw slides. 58 millimeters. There's my center hole, right? I measured 224. So there's my center line. And from the back of the thing, uh, from the back of the cabinet, it's 120 millimeters. So I was in this dilemma the other day, uh, or earlier this year, <laughs> When we were building these out, well, actually, 2020, the first side was, uh, I, did, I built it with Garrett uh, in December, and uh, he said, how are we going to get this line? I go, it's easy once you understand the system. He goes, but these uh, parallel guides, you see how I have this one set at 58? Okay, I want to show, did you guys get that? Yep. Okay, so what I want to show you, this is a balanced panel. Here's my rail. I got my end stop. So when I punched these out this morning, okay, I put it on here like this to punch out these holes at 58. This is the front of my cabinet. You can see that's where the edge banding is. Okay. So just pretend this is a, a drawer bank that you're building out. Okay. I punch these holes because now when I take my 1400, and you'll see how that goes right on the line. Okay. These are called end stops. You'll see that in episode 13. And these are your parallel edge stops. But let's look at the scale on here. I got to come from this back edge, or I could. But do you see it only goes to 110? So that's the question you guys have for me all the time. 
as high, I can't go into the uh, middle of a base cabinet. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to our YouTube channel, and if you go all hit videos and you scroll all the way down, 11 years ago, I did a video with this really tall guy that used to work here in, in, the <laughs> in Festool, USA. I call him The Dude, okay? What's up, dude? Him, he called me, and he said, hey, you heading into work? I said, yes. And I go, he goes, when you get here, I have a question for you. We're going to shoot a video on it. I go, okay, because I know you can do this. Since then, I had it up here. I think we have had 58,000 views, and it was one of our original videos that him and I did. Okay, we did it, and I think he posted it a half hour later. It's a common question is what I'm getting at, okay? So this is what I did. I laid out this line. That's 224, okay? And you can go back and watch that. I did it in the base panel because people weren't really seeing the possibilities with the LR32. Okay, so I'm going to get my clamps on here just so I, I don't go back and forth too much, okay? <sighs> okay, I'm going to call out somebody really quick. Jim H. from Pensacola. It was great talking with you this week. And I always call out Ian from the UK. How you doing, Mr. Harrison? Good to see you. All right. So I'm going to take my router off. I'll, I'll put my router on. And I have this um, flat bottom boring 5 millimeter bit chucked up. And what I'm going to do is to see my center line here? I'm going to move this back and forth. I am not coming from this edge because I can't get 120 on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick line at I know people who make gauge blocks for this, but I'm going to come over here. Chris, I'm going to step over here because I can get it better this way. And I'm going to look down, and I'm going to take my, my router, and I'm going to move it over to my line on the center. I'll take it like this. I won't crank this yet because this will skew a little. And then I'll take it over here, back here, and I'll bring it down to this line so I can grab that center line. And if you're patient enough, okay, you can get it absolutely perfect. And Garrett and I did last December, okay, and I'll lock it in just like this. It just takes a couple of minutes, a back and forth like this. I know people who've made gauge blocks that are really cool, okay, just for this purpose. All right, I'm going to bring it down here. Whoopsie. And I'm going to see as I go down that it still lines up. And I'm just going to bring it down and eyeball it. Let me see. Let me get my big head in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move it over just a little, just like this. And you'll see as I do this, and I'm going to come back in here. Chris, I'm going to come over here and punch it. And you'll see this little hole right here, right on center line, okay? So now I'm going to lock it in. So someone at home right now, I bet you you're saying, my God, is that a laborious setup? No, it's not, because you're going to make your own gauge block now. I don't care about any daggone scale on here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to capture this like this. I'm going to lock it on. Watch. Chris, come over here so you can see this, everybody. I'm going to bring my stop in here. I'm going to make my own gauge blocks. It's that easy. I'm just going to bring it right over here, put it on this outside rib, and grab it. Now when I do the other... 30 of these I got to do in the next couple of weeks or next month. I just ordered the plywood for the center one. Guess what? I have it all set up. And that's how easy it is. Now, I've seen people do this. And uh, these guys laughed at me this morning. If someone's got this super wide panel and you can't capture from the back or the front, you could go to any. This is a 9 16 or 14 millimeter across the flats here. Look at it. It's identical. And I got this from some parts place over in uh, Illinois. I think it was McMaster Car. And I can make customs of these. Okay? Now, I did, I bought that years ago, and I've never used them because I have found that these that come with the Festool system are quite sufficient. Okay? So hopefully you understand this. I'm going to lock it in. I think I got it all set up. I'm going to just verify my depth really quick. Where's my two gauge blocks? I'm going to punch in 12 millimeter. Yep, I'm just going to bring it down, and I'll reset my depth. Bring it in. I, I like to use gauge blocks like this. What's six and six, Minnie? Oh, my God. I'm going to call you Miss Metric today, babe. 
okay? And I got my, my rail labeled already. So I'm just gonna punch a few holes here just so you can see the technique. Remember, always check, make sure everything's tight. Your plug it cord's tight, everything. All right, you're gonna turn it on. You're gonna lock the speed in or the trigger, the power. And remember, you plunge from the top. And then you're gonna let it ride. Whoopsie, I'm skipping holes, sorry. I'm talking too much, as usual. But you'll see, it lines up and it's that easy. And you get a little play in those slides, I always verify it. The other thing I'll tell you, because I'm skipping holes and I shouldn't be, but you'll see, look, see how it's lining right up? I'll come right in. I just came and did it again. I'll come in. Make sure it finds its equilibrium. <clears throat> I have it labeled right here. Okay? Because I'm going to see where to stop. I showed you that in the first episode. Okay? And I'm going to back it off so you can see it. But you see right on center right in here. And you'll see the holes right there. You're good to go. Cool? So... This is ever expandable. You can set it up on any center line. Just be patient and eyeball it. So there you go. Okay, I'm going to get this out of the way, and we're going to move over here now. I'm just going to get this out of the way because I need this rail over there. Cool? Cool. Got it, got it. Sometimes I get in too much of a hurry, and I apologize, but I just want to cover as much as I can during these lives. Okay, I just want to look. I think I got it all. I'm going to take this over here. Now, here's the other top question. <coughs> Boy, I got a lot of questions from you guys on LR32. And I was telling the guys this morning, as I'm looking up at the clock, we're doing good. This next one's going to take a little bit of time. I got about four or five other questions. So this is not going to be the last LR32 because this, there's so much potential in this system for you when you're building cabinetry. Okay, so in saying that, there will be further episodes on this. The basics is episode 13. The practical applications is uh, this one, 45. Okay, so <coughs> what lengths of rail are available with the punched out holes? I call this the holy rail. <laughs> okay, this oh too. <laughs> you like that? You'll <laughs> never be in search of it. Festival's got the holy rail. Hey okay, you. so these are 32 millimeters apart, right? Okay, it's expandable. And when I say expandable, you can connect them. Top question, how do I connect them? Now, you can go out and purchase this one. I'm going to get this off to the side as I move everything around. Okay, get this out of the way. It still uses the same rail connection. I'm going to show you how to connect the rails because you can get this one. This is a 2424. It's basically 95 inches long. Okay, imperial. Okay, but look, what if I get a pantry panel that's cut... <coughs> At 95 and 3 quarter, okay, I need to lock this down. And with this, I'm just not getting it, okay? Hear me out. I want to do a tall pantry cabinet. I want to do a, a big double oven cabinet. I want to build a tall bookcase with a thick shelf, but I want to continue, the, I wanna continue as I punch it uh, and not skip a space with the 32 millimeter. You'll see this in a minute. I cut this, and hopefully you understood this from the basics, uh, that this is cut as a balanced panel. In other words, I cut this panel yesterday at 2,432 millimeters. It's divisible by what? 32. So that's why it's balanced. You'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes as I connect the rails. Okay? And if we use this tape, you'll see that every diamond on this tape is what? An increment of 32. Okay, and let's do the Imperial, Chris. Come in here. I get this all the time. Hey, listen, you got to square your, your wood. So we know here in the States you get a 96-inch. So I squared it. I was left with 95 and 3 quarter. So I'm going to show you how to connect the LR32 rails, okay, instead of storing this long rail. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, now I'm going to start over here and span it. 
And you're going to see where when I connect to Rails, and I know I've done this on live, I've done it on other platforms like Instagram before at least a dozen times, okay, on how to connect guide rails. I'm going to take my end stops off, and I'm going to set them right here. I'm going to take this one, set it right over here. Oh, my goodness. Call out new opening page team. What do you mean? Oh! <laughs> hey, you guys like the new timer? <laughs> I love the new timer. I didn't know if I'd like it. I liked it. It was pretty cool. It makes it easier for Big D and uh, me uh, communicating. I'm still an idiot. Okay. So I still have to have him wave his hand. Okay. So here's, the, here's what I'm getting at on this question. See this hole here? See this hole here? Okay, I used to have a hack where I need I want to do a perfect continuation of the 32 because from here to here is 32, 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 here to here is so hey, that's kind of a, a little no, that's not good. Okay, so what I did is I put two connectors in. Now, what you need to do to tighten these slotted screws is you have to use a Festool screwdriver. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so what you want to do is you don't want to over torque them, okay, just like this. Just like this, okay? Now I have two points of contact, right? I have one up top and one in the bottom. I always offset them so they slide together easier, like this. Now, <coughs> how do I guarantee that from here to here is 32? It's right on here. Okay, oh, see these marks on this side? You see the double hash mark right there, the two lines? That's your gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one connector here, and hopefully I, I can do this. I'm going to make sure I can lock it in just like this. Bear with me. Okay. Woo. There we go. Uh, it's always this way. No pressure. I'm getting nervous, Chris. Look out. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take this, and you just got to be patient. You got to move it over, and when you say no pressure, I miss the hole completely. So I got to take it like this. I got to make sure that that mark is in between. I got to see that mark. Hey, so I'm going to put it right there. You see how that, those two pins index there, and those two pins index there. But you have to see the mark or the marks. Okay, hey, 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 are you making fun of me? Okay. <laughs> I can't believe you're making fun of me. You, okay. It's just the way he talks. But it's okay. listen, 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 listen. Now I know that's an eight millimeter gap. I know that, and I'll measure it. It's exactly eight millimeters. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure that those pins are indexed before I tighten it up. And that aligns it. And now I'm going to tighten these two screws here. And I'm going to tighten these two screws here. I'm going to flip it over. Look, three points of contact. They line up. I'm going to take it just like this. And I'm going to tighten these two screws. And I'll show you how it lines up. Because remember last week when I said it's a balanced panel? Like that one's cut at a 32 millimeter increment. When I put the end stops on there, I only need one set of lines. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off now. Okay. <coughs> Woo! How many threads are in there? Okay. <laughs> My God, Sedge. Okay, so now let's see if I can really mess this up. I'm going to slide this here like this. I'm going to take one of my end stops. And you see how you have the extra room on here? So it's really nice. <coughs> I'm going to take my end stop. I'm going to put 16 up and out. I want to do this so the camera can get this. And I'll put this knob in here again. Oh, my God. I need some quick knobs. Okay, and look, I'm going to slide it here. I'm going to grab the other end stop, and I'm going to hit 16 over here, up and out. And I just want you to see this as I do this. I'm going to put it right here, okay, just like this, and I'm going to tighten it up. And you know what? If this all lined up perfectly, and this is cut at a perfect 32 millimeter, hello! <laughs> hey, Mo! 
Okay, look, I got it tight there, and that nestles right in there, and it's, it's nice and tight. Nice so, uh, boom, baby. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so hopefully I covered that clearly enough. What? <laughs> Minnie, look at all the people. Wow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we covered how to do a draw box, okay, or how to use the Fest Tool system when you can't get these from the front edge on the rail. And we covered on how to connect the rails to have a perfect continuation of the 32 millimeter. We got, other, like I said, we got more to do. Uh, we're just not going to do it today. We're going to have an episode later this summer on it. Eh, maybe we'll call LR32 advanced. We call this practical applications. This is number 45. Okay, <coughs> so uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, down by the river. Okay, hey! My favorite part. Eh, not really, but it's fun. <laughs> My favorite part is teaching you guys about Festool because I love this system. Okay, so look where everybody is from. Oh, okay, so I'm going to start right now and say this. If I... Are you guys putting up places around the world because you know I can't pronounce them? <laughs> I try my best, okay? So I'm going to go right here. We got Denmark. We got Worcester, England. We got Pinner, England. <laughs> Pinner. <laughs> Pinner. Warsaw, Poland. Wasaga Beach, Canada. Finland, Denmark. We have Kayalami, South Africa. We have Paramaribo, Suriname. We have Warclaw, Poland. We have Johannesburg, South Africa. We got Paul from Wiltshire, England, Lucerne, Switzerland, Chadel, England, Malta. How you doing, Chris? Rotterdam, Netherlands, Vienna, Austria, East Yorkshire, England, Switzerland, Bedford, UK, Harrogate, England, Edmonton, Alberta, Pal Palestine. This is so cool. We have Chichester, England, Dorchester, or Dorster, Dorset. Dorset, not Dorchester, Dorset, England, Mechanicsville, Virginia, El Paso, Texas. I know people in Mechanicsville, Virginia. El Paso, Texas, Evergreen, Colorado, Wallingford, Connecticut, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Boston. Boston. Go Sox! All right. Heritage, Virginia, Woodstock, Georgia, France, Connecticut, Indiana. Where's that? Right here, baby. <laughs> Greeley, Colorado, St. Pete, Florida, Columbus, Ohio, Fenton, Michigan, Raymond, Maine. All right. You're always there, Raymond. Awesome. Nebraska, Albuquerque, West Hoboken, New Jersey, Pulliop, Washington, St. Augustine, Florida, Wake Forest, North Carolina, Caldwell, Ohio, Roscoe, Illinois. Min Minnie, you're still writing. Greenland, New Hampshire, Atlanta, Georgia, Shrewsburg, UK, St. Osseth, UK, Hampson, Sweden, Geelong, Australia. We're coming to you, Australia, baby. Portugal, St. John, New Brunswick. <laughs> I knew it. Kent, UK. Belgium, Tupac. Wall, <laughs> Minnie, are you writing stuff on here I can't pronounce? Wall, Wiki, Netherlands. French Alps, Edinburgh, Scotland, Hungary, Vesky City, <laughs> Cinnamonissen, New Jersey, Marvin from Holland, Michigan, my main man, how you doing, Marvin, Portland, Oregon, Northeast Indiana, Lady, Connecticut, Boston, Montana, Eatonton, Georgia, Whitestown, Whitestown, is it Whitestown or Whitestown, let me know. Uh, Richmond, Kentucky, Summitville, Indiana, Pinehurst, North Carolina, Cottage Grove, Minnesota. And as I have been saying this, Minnie snuck around the back of the board, and she's been writing. Palestine, Spokane, Washington, El Paso again, Ukraine, U Georgia, Urari, Finland, Mont 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 Montreal, Grand Ledge, Michigan, Tallinn, Estonia, Mechanicsville, Virginia, Helena, Alabama, Seattle, New Orleans, Haverhill, Mass. I know how to say that right. Charleston, Lancaster, PA. Hey, was that you, doing? All right. We have La Mesa, California, Rochester, New York. Do it yourself, class. No way. You guys are supposed to say, way. 
Uh, way, Fontana, California. <laughs> wow, guys. The router. I don't know. I think it was our second or third video. It's episode. It's in the it's in the first five episodes on how to pick the right router. And um, boy, yeah, yeah. Because guess what? The way we designed Fast Tool Live and the content is we decided what are the top questions we get in training. Okay. And somebody asked me the other day, Hey, do you have uh, how how much longer can you do Fast Tool Live? And I go, The rest of my daggone life. <laughs> I already. I think I've already. Uh, created content for 32 more episodes. So I just want to let you know, we love doing this. We love you. Thank you for watching. I'm glad I called out service, uh, inside sales or uh, customer service. Okay. I also want to call out one more group of dudes and dudettes. They happen to be on the road. I haven't seen our sales managers or our regional sales managers in over a year. There's a bunch of you out there, and I hope you're watching. What? Oh, geez, and how are you? I just, <laughs> I just want to let you know that some of you I haven't met yet because of this daggone pandemic. I can't wait to meet you, and I want to thank every single regional sales manager from Festool, <laughs> Festool, from Festool USA for doing such a spectacular job. You guys are the people that keep us cranking back home, and I love you. Okay, so keep doing a great job. I can't thank the crew in here, the crew that helps us outside of here. Brent, you're awesome. Minnie, you're the bomb. Chris, I love you. Big D, I love you. Minnie, you know how much I love you. And I just want to let you know, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for watching Fest Tool Live. And guess what we got to do next week, baby? Woo! We're out of here. See you next Friday.